I'm Rick Johansson, and this is the Iron Echo Design Channel. In this tutorial, I want to do a deeper dive into the trace bitmap feature of Inkscape. If you've followed along, we've done trace bitmap, but we haven't looked at the multiple scans, specifically the color scans. So we'll go with a JPEG or a PNG image, and I'll show you how to extract this type of color vector file. Then we'll drop in an easy to do watercolor background. And for detail, for artistic touch, we'll pop in some paint splatter bubbles using the spray tool. I wanna to show you the clones and copy and the difference between the two. All right, so let's begin. So first we need our source image. This came from pexels.com. This is an open source platform. And to give credit where credit is due, this is from Shavannon Photography. It's called Close Up of a Siamese Fighting Fish. So here's the file. Full disclosure, I did change the file size to under three megabytes. Inkscape has a tendency to crash when it's doing too much computing power at once, and my computer is not fast enough to handle the big files. If you experience slowness or crashing, then try that. Try to resize the file. If you need help learning how to do that, just pop a comment below and I'll help you out there. So let's go over. Before we can run, we got to walk. So where's trace bitmap? Go up to path, trace bitmap, and you'll see a tab comes up on the sidebar menu. The default settings are single scan, brightness cutoff with a threshold of 0.45. So what does that mean? So it's gonna take the image and depending on the lightness and darkness, it'll take out a vector file based on the threshold. So 0.45, just make sure you have speckles, smooth corners and optimize. These are all the default settings. Let's go to update, it gives you a preview, apply, and you get nothing, it just looks like junk. This means the baseline threshold is not what we want. Let's try 0.67. Click on the image, apply. That's a little better. Let's go to 0.75. And you get that. So to answer a question from a comment in a previous video, let's say this 0.75 is too dark and the first one was way too light. You can keep playing with the thresholds or you can clip out parts that you want. I like the tail here, maybe the detail in the eye up here and the body. And you can take those different clips and combine them into one composite image. If you want help with that, let me know. But let's move on to the main event. Let's bring down the fish. Here we go. The only difference will be instead of single scan, click over to multiple scans. I want to start with brightness steps because it might be a design solution that you'll find useful. I have it selected. The only difference will be for default, let's choose smooth, stack, and remove background. So image is selected, apply. What do we have here? We have a new vector file based on the source image that was made by doing eight scans of the brightness step. But we wanna go with color for this project. I will move this aside, click back on the image, and still under multiple scans, this time choose colors. Smooth, stack, remove background, all chosen. As an example, we'll start with eight scans. Update gives you a preview, apply. Let's take a look at this. So here we have the eight color scans and to show you, you can click off of everything and then double click on it and you can grab different layers. So here's the red layer. Let's take out the dark purple layer. And you see this might work for you. If you have a project, you want a stylized version of the fish, you can go with that. But I wanna make something with more fine detail. So let's go down to another version. This is the same file just duplicated and I'll change the color scans to 20, apply. My Inkscape thought for about 20 seconds and produced this. So here we go. This is the color vector we made. Just like before, this time I'm gonna double click on this baby blue background part and delete that. Out of habit, I'm gonna group all these layers. So I'm gonna click in no man's land around everything that selects all the different 19 layers. I took out one. I'll do control G, which groups it all together so I can move it all in unison. Now I do notice that I have some transparency. It's missing part of the body and part of the head. I think that looks good for this project, but if you don't like that, an easy fix is choose the Bezier pen tool, draw yourself a shape that will cover the problem area, slide it in place, go up to your top menu if you're on the selector. These are the hierarchy steps, drop it down to the bottom and you've got it cleaned up a little bit. Just make sure to regroup that. Now I don't want that there. So we'll say goodbye to that. And let's move to some open space for the watercolor background. If you've played along with my other videos, you know I love the watercolor effect. I think it looks good, it adds an organic feeling, but it's quirky. So I'll give you a quick refresher here. Let's choose the Create Circles and Ellipses tool. I'm gonna do just an oval 
and it doesn't matter the shape. It does matter the color. For some reason, I've noticed the richer, darker, full opacity colors work better. So if you're just trying watercolor out, go with like a dark purple or a blue. The way it works is we're gonna take this shape, this color, go to my fill and stroke menu. So I'm on this orange color, full opacity. Go to filters, texture, watercolor. And as you can see, if this is the first time you're trying it, it looks bad. It didn't really do what we wanted it to do. And that's okay. The number one way to manipulate your watercolor effect is with the blur. So if I take the blur all the way off, you can see there's my oval. See the outline of the oval? And Inkscape is using that square as the texture that it's applying to the oval. So somewhere in this version up at 66% blur is where I get the effect that I'm looking for. Let me go one step further to show you a couple more ways to make it look the way you want. See that X in the middle? If you grab the X, you can then move it around and it changes the watercolor. Like, so this is just Inkscape doing math, creating this cool organic fluid effect. When you get it where you like it, let's say right here where there's some extra bleeding, click off of it. Click all the way off of it, choose your selector tool. Now, I don't know if this is something official in the Inkscape manual, but when I resize my image, then I can move it without it disrupting the effect. And it won't matter if I scale it. So let's zoom back out to our fish. Let's scale it much larger and it still retains the bleed the way I wanted it. I'm gonna turn it on its side. So you see these like arrows? I'll choose one rotation there. Let's see what that's gonna look like. Need it bigger than that. Let's scale it up some more. I think that's all right. Let's drop it to the bottom and we can reposition the fish so it just peeks out the top of the watercolor. Time to learn the spray can tool and what it can do for you. So down here, spray can, spray objects by sculpting or painting, click there. On mode, we're gonna cover the first three settings. Spray copies, spray clones, or spray objects in a single path. Spray can is gonna spray whatever object you have selected. So I'll get my selector tool and I'll choose this triangle. I've arbitrarily called it copy. And for settings, these are just the settings that'll work well for our purposes here. Depending on what you wanna do with the spray can, you'll be changing them, but let me go over them. So width, five, amount, 30. That's the rough amount of how many objects will be sprayed out every time you click. Rotation will be important on this project, so I have it at 50%, scale, 50%, scatter, 50, and focus, 50. We're gonna spray this triangle here, and we're set to spray copies. I'll hold the left mouse button down and draw a line. It sprays out copies, it's got some rotation, some scaling, looking good. Let's choose now the pink triangle, spray can, but we'll do spray clones, left mouse button. What is the difference? We'll get to that. So now we'll choose the single path, spray can, and single path is this mode right here. And again, you really can't tell the difference until you revisit them. So on copy, I can choose any of these, and they are independent of each other. No big deal, but clone. This was sprayed as cloned copies, which means if I change the original, they all change. I can change the color, they all change. This is very powerful, and we're gonna use it in our project. So what's up with single path? Well, that's good because unlike copies, they're all independent, this is all one thing. You could do similar features as clone by changing them all at once, but it doesn't scale. Thank you, Unsung Hero Spray Can Tool. Now let's put you to work. Knowing what we now know, the spray can will spray anything we choose for an object. I pre-made these objects that we're gonna spray, but to show you how easy it is, you just grab the circle tool, draw out a circle, Control D will duplicate it, make that smaller, grab them all, path, union, and we'll change the color to that pink. There you go, we've got our bubble slash paint splatter, but it's way too big. So if you zoom in, you can see that is the scale I wanna spray. If you hold shift and control together, when you resize, it'll stay uniform. Maybe right there, we'll see when we get there. I'm gonna clone it so I can always change it. So I know it's selected, go to spray can tool. This middle one here is clones. And let's just start shooting it around. Okay, I just sprayed it around the perimeter of the fish. And to show you the clone feature, if I wanna change the color, with the original clone selected, just change the color. <laughs> a little bit too much like blood on that. So let's go back to wherever it was, right there, pink. 
I'm going to do another pass, but let's change the original clone. Just duplicated it. Get the opacity out of there. Let's go with a full white. So it is selected. Go back to spray can. I'm on clones. Let's see what this looks like. I can't tell if it looks like bubbles or paint. Either way, that's the effect I'm going for. Let's do one more, but I'll do a single path to show you how that could come in handy. I've got a smaller version of this black dot selected as my object. I'll do spray can, spray objects in a single path for the mode. Let's add some contrast down here. To show you how it works, if you grab any one of the dots you just sprayed out, they move as one single path so you can take them all together without grouping them and with that we'll wrap up this tutorial off camera i did drop in this weird shape here to be like bubbles underneath everything just to round out the composition there hopefully this was helpful if you have questions or ideas for future tutorials let me know in the comments and thanks